Mercedes have given their flagship EQS a baby brother. It's the EQE 350. But hey, don't worry, it's not all fluffy bunnies and cuddly. AMG have their sticky little performance fingers all over it. I'm talking a huge amount of power. We'll get to that on the show today. Welcome back to the channel. If you like what we do here, hit subscribe and the bell icon so good things happen to you. So what do you make of the design and styling of the EQE? It's basically the same as the EQS, to me at least, only a little bit smaller. There's a couple of subtle differences at the front. You get those vertical strips in the grille as opposed to the Mercedes stars on the EQS. There's some different options for wheels, but it looks very similar. Around the back, some alterations to the trim at the lower end, but many people can't spot the difference. I can't help but think they should have made a few more changes to distinguish it from the EQS, especially as Mercedes themselves insist that the EQE is its own own car, not meant to be a slightly smaller EQS. I'm wondering, does it devalue the EQS by having a baby twin? Would a different design to the EQE make a few more people interested in it? And I don't know about you, but I think I prefer the design language of something, well, like Polestar, for instance. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Inside, there are some nice updates if you're going for the AMG variant, a different steering wheel, and an upgrade to the hyperscreen that you get in the EQS, amongst other things. Okay, so I called the EQE the EQS's baby twin, whatever that means, uh, but what is the difference in size and how does it fit in with the competition? Although the EQE is smaller, it's still more closely aligned to like a Model S from Tesla in terms of the footprint. Length, 4.95 meters, much bigger than a Model 3 at 4.7 meters. If you look at the height, width, and length, again, it should be compared to a Model S, not a Model 3. So it must have a massive amount of storage then. Well, no, not really. It has 430 liters in the boot, still beaten by a Model 3 in terms of pure capacity, and it's dwarfed by the Model S. Okay, let's move on to performance, because I'm itching to talk about the AMG variant. But first, entry level, EQE 350, 215 kilowatts of power and 530 newton meters of torque. No slouch, but no performance monster. Not to 62 miles an hour, that's not to 100 kilometers an hour, in six seconds. Although probably uh, being a little bit uh, just hesitant to confirm those times, because when reviewers have got their hands on Mercedes electric cars recently, they have gone a little bit quicker, a little bit further in the real world than the actual stats we were told. Top speed limited to around 100 miles an hour. So it won't fare particularly well against Teslas here or even the faster Polestar 2 or Mach E options out there. But it starts to get tasty when AMG get their hands on the car. But what have they done with it? We have to break this part down into a couple of sections. Firstly, EQE 43 and 53. Now, the 43 version gets twin motors for a total of 350 kilowatts of power. Now you're getting interesting and a whopping 858 newton meters of torque. And presuming you have more than 50% state of charge, not to 62 miles an hour, the dash is done in 4.2 seconds. And that's interesting because it's a fraction of a second faster than a Model 3 long range from Tesla. But things get even more interesting if you're splashing out on the AMG. 53 and the option of the dynamic plus package with bells and whistles all over the place now you have different motors specially developed for 505 kilowatts of power and over a thousand newton meters of torques and presuming you have 70 percent state of charge not to 62 happens in 3.3 seconds at that stage you're pretty much identical to something like a model 3 performance but as i alluded to earlier this car is closer in its footprint to a model s and it's almost identical in acceleration to the long-range variant. But I can hear Tesla fans right now shouting at YouTube, but Plaid, it's so much faster. And yeah, nothing touches that for speed and performance. But don't get bogged down in simple straight line figures. There's more to a car's performance than being a one-trick pony. The AMG variants come with upgraded brakes, adaptive air suspension, and they really help improve the performance when driving hard. And if you want, you can option the bigger wheels and stronger carbon ceramics as well for more stopping power. Okay, gotta take a rest after all of that. Not to 60 chat. 
Let's talk about batteries, range and charging. The EQE has a 100 kilowatt hour battery, 90.6 kilowatt hours usable. It's a big buffer and maybe Mercedes Benz could have given us access to a little more of the battery than that. And on that point, over the air updates to the battery management system will be popular. So we may see some range improvements once the cars are out on the road with more real life data on battery performance going back to the Mercedes mothership. But what does that mean for range? WLTP figures say a range of between 545 and 660 kilometers. That's about 340 to 412 miles. That's a long way to go. And it's hard to say at the moment, but I reckon around 350 miles is where the EQE will settle in the real world in typical weather and driving conditions. It'll be extremely slippery through the air as it has an incredible drag coefficient of 0.2 which is beaten really only by the long gone EV1. As you'd expect, range will drop a good bit if you go for the AMG variants. Of the EQE, take off 50 to 60 miles of range for the performance version, but that's fair enough as these cars aren't made for pure range due to the wheel sizes and the extra motor and how the cars are geared towards performance. When you want to charge the EQE, performance is, it's okay, Actually, it's pretty good. A few years ago, I'd have been really impressed with this technology, but we are moving forward at quite a pace. 11 kilowatts AC charging comes as standard. You can option 22 kilowatts AC if you live in a country with plenty of fast AC posts. On DC, 170 kilowatts is the number that we've been given for peak charge rate. Not hugely impressive. Many cars, uh, this price range would beat that around 200 kilowatts or more. Although I'm keener to see the actual charge curve. Peak rates are interesting, but actually you wanna see how much juice it can take over a sustained period of time. Now with the nice big buffer that I've mentioned already and battery preconditioning, it could well be a very decent, and I mean short, charge time to get to 80%. In summary, we don't have detailed pricing on the AMG versions yet, but suffice to say they're gonna be expensive. Get some perspective though, the entry level EQE costing around 60,000 pounds, of course I'm in the UK, so you do the conversion. That's very similar to a Model 3 performance, about five grand less than a Model Y performance, but of course pricing different all over the world according to taxis and import duties. And if you wanna fully spec out an AMG 53, go nuts on the options list because it's Mercedes, there'll be plenty of options. You can easily add around 50% of the base price. And at that stage, you're heading into Model S long range territory, maybe more. So what do you make of the EQE overall? And which one would you be buying? Well, for me, I'm probably sticking with the EQE 350. Don't get me wrong, it's nice to have all that AMG power, but as I always say on this channel, range is king. If you can get it, you should get it. And the EQS, if there's anything to go by, is gonna be very efficient as well. Don't forget to join us on our Facebook group to keep the conversation going. Leave us a comment below about what you think of the Mercedes-Benz EQE. And also give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. It tells us to make more like it, and I'll see you on the next one.